What's going on, Miami Dolphins fans? Running backs on today's off-season preview video. Continuing to do these preview videos for every single one of the positions this off-season. I think we got four left. We got running backs. We got edge rushers. We got tight ends and safeties. But hey, if you're subscribed, you would already know that. So go ahead and get subscribed. Catch up on all those videos that you haven't caught already. But like I said, today is running backs on the Fins Up Network. One of the sexier positions this year in, in regards to the offseason, because that free agent class, as you're going to see here in a second, is loaded. The draft is pretty damn deep. And guess what? We're going to need it because, as you probably know, we don't have any running backs left. <laughs> and that's going to make sense to you here in a second if it doesn't already. We are going to get to that. But before we get started, I want to hear from you. Let's hear your top free agents, your top NFL draft prospects, whoever you would like to see the Miami Dolphins pursue at running back this offseason. Go ahead and drop those names in the comments. Curious to see who you've got. But let's talk about what we were uh, running with here in 2022 and say why we don't have any running backs. Because as you can see there, every single running back, not counting Alec Ingold, he'd be a fullback is not on the current roster because they're due to hit free agency or, in Chase Edmonds' case, obviously got dealt prior to the trade deadline during the season. But we got those two top guys right there. You know who the offense flowed through in the running game this year. Once Edmonds was out of the picture, it was Raheem Mostert, it was Jeff Wilson. And really, Jeff Wilson, as soon as he was brought in, they really didn't show any hesitancy in giving him the ball giving him carries in the run game and the pass game. He was getting it done and he did kind of cool off. He ended up having a hip injury and Raheem Mostert came back through and he was fairly consistent outside of that one fumble against the Packers game. That was kind of his, uh, his down spot on the season, but fumbles happen. We understand that, but he's a free agent. Jeff Wilson is a free agent. I do think We'll talk a little bit more about this as we continue on as well. The fact that the Dolphins gave up a fifth rounder for Jeff Wilson kind of leads me to think that they have intentions of trying to re-sign him this offseason. I also think with Raheem Mostert, despite being, what's he now, 30, 31 years old, I do think Mike McDaniel likes him. I think he fits the scheme well. I do think there's a chance that they try to re-sign him. But as you make your way down the list, obviously Edmonds is gone. He's out of the picture. Savan Ahmed only had 12 carries last year. But honestly, when he got the ball, he made plays with it. He got that touchdown against the Bills. As you can see there, he averaged over five yards per carry. A name to at least keep an eye on as one of those kind of under-the-radar type of signings. You got Miles Gaskin, who I honestly just don't think is a fit in this, uh, in this offense. And we kind of saw that only appearing in four games, only getting 10 carries on the season. But it's going to be interesting to see what they end up doing with those guys up on top there, Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson, because Chris Greer, in recent years at least, has really put off prioritizing running back in free agency and in the draft. It's kind of always been those second, third tier guys. And in regards to the draft, it's legit been no one. So we'll have to see if that changes here in year two of the Mike McDaniel uh, offense. But let's go into those free agent running back, because I talked about it being a kind of a sexy class and a sexy grouping. Just look at the names that are on top of this list. Now, this isn't every free agent running back. Like I've said in these preview videos, I have these um, sorted in a certain way in free agents and the running backs I have sorted by yards. But you can just look at the big name splash type of signings that could be made over this offseason. And, and no running backs don't typically command the, the top dollar. They end up taking a little bit of a discount, relatively speaking, just because of the, the position they play. But look at some of these top tier guys and look at their ages too. You got Josh Jacobs, picked a great year to lead the NFL in rushing. He's headed to free agency. Saquon Barkley finally gets back healthy, and he showed what he was capable of doing. Miles Sanders, not always completely featured as the lead guy in that Eagles running back room, but he performed when he was there. Jamal Williams, what did he have? 16, 17 touchdowns this last year? And granted, yeah, probably 10 plus of them were from the one-yard line. Knows for the end zone, though, I do think Detroit tries to re-sign him. He seems like a, a Detroit kind of guy. The situation in Dallas is intriguing. Those are the latest reports that I have heard anyways is that the team would potentially franchise tag Tony Pollard and then try to restructure Zeke's contract. So the people out there that play fantasy that want uh, Tony Pollard to be a featured back somewhere might have to wait a little bit longer. 
But like you see, there's a, there's some guys on there. You got R2 at the bottom there with Wilson and Mostert. Devin Singletary, obviously being Dolphins fans, we know a bit about him playing for the Bills. Bills never really featured a running game, but when they did, I always thought Devin Singletary did a fine job. But definitely some uh, some names on there to to keep in mind. Like I said, you can go splash free agent signing if these guys don't get tagged or or re-upped um, by their own team. But then you also kind of have some of these running back by committee options. And it's our guys. It's it's the Jeff Wilsons, the Raheem Mosterts of the world. If you remember back to the trade deadline, who was the hot name? It was Kareem Hunt. And who was its uh, Instagram or Snapchat story like a week or two ago? Who was hanging out with uh, Tyreek Hill, I believe it was? Kareem Hunt. So keep an eye on a, on a name like that. Basically lower cost options where if the Dolphins don't want to commit big dollars to one of these free agents, maybe you end up getting one or two of these mid-tier, third-tier type of free agents. And then you rely on more of a running back by committee, similar to what we did in 2022. But let's take a peek at these NFL draft running backs. because I talked about this being a bit of a deeper class, and obviously there are some studs up on top as well. Now, these are sorted out by the NFL mock draft database. Like I have said in previous videos, if the player has a number in parentheses next to their name, that's where their projected round starts. You can see that Robinson and Gibbs are projected to go in the first, and then you move so on and so forth, Charbonnet into the third, Kenny McIntosh starting off the fourth. Not an exact science, but at least something for us to go off of. Now, I will say right away, Got some insight that if Miami had at least one of their original first round picks, I believe their own pick would have been around what, 21. And if they wouldn't have lost the pick from the 49ers would have been right around 30 or 29. I believe the, the 49ers are drafting. Bijan Robinson was their guy. That was the guy they targeted. Mike McDaniel apparently is in love with him. And what's not to love? Kind of one of those you remember when Saquon Barkley came out of the draft, how he just kind of felt like a can't miss guy and gets it, gets it done between the tackles, has the speed, the burst, the big plays, has the ability to catch the ball and create that way kind of feels can't miss. And I know running backs don't typically get drafted all that high anymore these days, but Bijan Robinson seems like a, a surefire first rounder and have, have it on good authority that if the dolphins had one of those first rounders, he was their guy. They have him real high on their draft board right now. But not too far off, Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama. He started his college career at uh, Georgia Tech. And I am going to go into a deeper dive in a draft uh, player profile on Gibbs down the road here as we get closer to the draft. But honestly, the, this, the, same, uh, the same source has the Dolphins very linked to Gibbs. And it's probably not likely that he lasts until 51. As you see there, our first pick in this draft comes in the second round at 51. But man, if he were to somehow be available, I think Mike McDaniel might run faster than what Jameer Gibbs can run and get that card up to the podium and say, you know what, in my offense, what I can do with Jameer Gibbs is going to be off the wall. Pairing his, his speed, his athleticism with guys that they already have, this offense would be taken to the next level with one of these top tier running backs. But like I said, no brainer for me if he slides to 51, but other guys I've got my eye on. Like I said, it's a fairly deep class as well as, as you go down through the rounds. I'm likely doing draft profiles on Kenny McIntosh, on uh, Tajay Spears, who just stole the senior bowl a few weeks back, Sean Tucker out of Syracuse. You got Chase Brown out of Illinois. There's a lot of people on this list that I, I think have the ability to be starters in this league. And if not starters, have a great, great opportunity to end up being a feature, kind of like featured secondary backs in like a running back by committee. So I think there are some guys that can get some meaningful snaps in this uh, NFL draft class of running backs as well. But to put a bow on it here from, uh, from a running back situation scenario here over the off season, my dream scenario is somehow landing Gibbs. That is my guy. I mean, I would take, I would take Bijan Robinson over Gibbs. I just don't feel like that's quite as realistic. But if for some reason Gibbs can fall, if Miami maybe makes a slight trade up to try to get a guy like Jameer Gibbs, that's my dream scenario. But what I would consider my most likely scenario is that you likely either re-sign Mostert and or Jeff Wilson, one of those guys, potentially even both of those guys. And then you add another running back in the draft. Maybe even Savan Ahmed's part of that on like a one-year deal. But adding a running back in the draft 
well, I, I should say, I shouldn't say in free agency because Miami technically has to sign one of these guys, but in regards to guys that haven't been here in the past, I think we either see at least one free agent outside of Mostert and Wilson, like I said, or at least one guy in the NFL draft. That's probably more of the realistic scenario over the dream scenario of Jameer Gibbs. But that's what I have got for the offseason running back preview. Like I said, guys, I would like to hear your top free agent, your top NFL draft prospects. Who do you want the Miami Dolphins to target this offseason? Go ahead and drop those in the comments. Let's carry on the discussion there. That's what I have got for the running backs. What did I say? Edge rushers is next. So stay tuned for that. Get subscribed if you are not already. And we'll see you next time for that edge rushers preview. But until then, Dolphins fans, fins up.